Hey everyone, welcome back to Omega Strikers Academy. This is your Professor John, and today we'll be talking about ball control. Now, ball control is really important because if we can maximize our time with the ball, we can find more opportunities to break the barriers, or better yet, score a goal. I define ball control as utilizing your skills and abilities to maintain dominance over the ball, preventing your opponents from ever taking hold. So what's bad ball control? Bad ball control is when you're always chasing the ball. You're not using your abilities, you're not using your surroundings, you're hitting the ball when it's not necessary, and you're not last hitting. Oh wait, how do I know when it's necessary? Well, there's two ways to know when it's necessary. Uh, you know it's necessary when the enemy poses as a threat to your ball control, as in they might go for a strike on the ball, or they might start attacking you. And the second way to know is when the ball is on your side and not theirs. Because when the ball is on your side, that means that's pressure for you and your team. So therefore, we have to do everything we can to redirect that pressure on the enemy side. So what's good ball control? Well, it's everything I said about bad ball control, but the complete opposite. You always have the ball, you're using your surroundings, you're using your abilities to prevent the enemy from getting the ball or from ever having control. You're, hitting, you're not hitting the ball when it's not necessary, and you're last hitting the ball. So let me open up Photoshop over here and give you an example. So, I'll give you an example of what's bad ball control. So let's say like this is you up here, you got the ball, and what's most common that I see players do right over here is that they, they're just going to end up shooting the ball, you know? They, they're going to maybe try and go for like an angle to get the barrier, or in the previous lesson that I talked about, they might even play patty cake. Or they might just shoot it like somewhere down here, right? So, and we don't want to do that because we want a ball control. So, consider this. I talked about utilizing your surroundings. And your surroundings in this, um, in this moment would be the walls. So, what if instead of just shooting the ball willy-nilly, we use this wall? We hit it back and forth, slowly, slowly navigating the ball further into their base, slowly, while also being able to keep up with the ball so that we don't lose control. Now, I want you to think about it. When you play soccer, or be it hockey, you don't want to lose control of the ball or the puck. You don't see soccer players just kicking it wherever you know they always have ball control ball control is a little bit more difficult in this game because we're kind of built different and we hit the ball kind of hard so therefore we need to utilize our surroundings to like um to slowly push the ball forward now as you're pushing the ball forward and it's getting closer and closer to like the enemy goal that's applying more pressure so right over here, we got like we got their other forward, the enemy forward right over here, and you're you're slowly coming up to him with the ball. Now the closer we get to the opponent will result in the enemy player having to have a faster reflex to when you hit the ball, right? And since he needs a faster reflex, that opens up like a bigger margin of error for him to miss the strike. And if we can create a bigger margin of error for them to miss the strike, that means you have a higher chance of getting the ball past him to possibly break the barrier or even score a goal. Let me give you another uh, scenario. So, Let's say you have the ball, right? And this player, he's coming up from an angle, like this. So what I want you to be doing in this situation 
instead of just shooting the ball randomly, you know, how about you use your abilities to hinder the player's movement? So let's assume you're playing Amy, for example. In this situation, you could you could shoot your primary, you know, blast him with your AoE, slow his movement. Or ideally you could set up your center, you know, aim it towards their goal, but not because you want to score a goal utilizing like the the strikes the sentry sends out but more so for the fact that you can block out this enemy's path preventing him from interrupting your ball control so that you can have a higher chance again of breaking the bear or scoring uh, scoring a goal let me show you one more thing Now, there's a lot of situations where you have the ball, right? And you're so close to an enemy player that you can practically kiss him. Now, guys, this is a really important tech right here, right? If you want to win this 1v1 against this player, you need to anticipate. Let the enemy strike the ball first. Because if he strikes first, his strike goes on cooldown. But you still have your strike. So once you hit the ball, he can't do anything about it. And then you just get, you, you break the barrier or you score a goal. That's so free. And guys, I'm telling you this, literally in low elo, people don't know this, bro. Let the ball slowly approach the player. Like, don't, don't touch the ball. Just literally let it slowly approach him. And I want you, in your next game, anticipate. Anticipate the strike. So that once he hits, you're already ready. You don't have to be the first one to hit the ball. In this game, it's also like great to be the last one to hit the ball. All because strikes go on cooldown. You can't just spam it. And that's pretty much it. I want you guys to maintain ball control by utilizing your surroundings. In this case, the wall over here. Bounce it back and forth. Carry the ball slowly along with you. Especially if you are not being pressured and there's no threat and if there is a threat approaching utilize your abilities to hinder the enemy's movement or better yet set up a boundary like amy's sentry turn to prevent them from interrupting you from scoring a goal and remember when you're in a 1v1 situation i'm telling you guys this is literally free low last hit the ball you will get it past him. You'll break that barrier. You're, you will score that goal. Very important. So in conclusion, I want you guys to not be afraid to slow down your gameplay. Assess the situation. So much is happening in the game. So much. And that means so much information that you can gather to utilize so that you can make better decisions. When you're playing your games, I want you to consider how can I maximize my time with the ball while maintaining pressure? And also ask yourself, does the enemy currently pose a threat? Do I need to hit slash pass the ball? If yes, consider, consider any openings. If you see a gap in the enemy team, shoot it towards that gap. Don't shoot it at the enemy. That's the worst option you can do. Aim for the gaps. Pressure the enemy team by pushing the ball forward. Don't always need to have like scoring in mind. We got we got we got to take the the tiny steps to make that score. And if possible, pass to another teammate. Maybe he can find another opening. Sometimes you don't have the opening. Therefore, you need to rely on your other teammates. Guys, remember, this game is literally like soccer or hockey. Pass the ball, pass the puck. 
you open opportunities not only just for yourself but for your teammates as well maybe they see something that you don't and that's pretty much the end of this lesson so right here i have like the index of like everything we've covered so far lesson one that was the importance of spacing and if you haven't seen that video already please do I talk about how positions can lead to scoring better goals, it can prevent you from being scored on, and um, it teaches you how to avoid circumstances like the patty cake scenario that I, I, I brought up uh, once during the Photoshop uh, demonstration. And we just finished lesson two, exercising ball control. I want you guys to Utilize the information I just shared with you today so that you can maximize your time with the ball and increase your chances of making a score. And that's the end of class. Now's the time to raise your hands in the comments below. Um, ask me a question on if something was like confusing or if you want me to go more in depth on another topic. Okay, thank you guys for listening and have a great day.